Anthropic, founded by former OpenAI employees, is now on track to generate a whopping $850 million in 2024 after only operating for what will be four years. These siblings, Dario and Daniela Almade, were senior members at OpenAI. Dario was actually OpenAI's VP of research back in 2021 before he left and was previously a research scientist at Google. They both departed the company due to directional differences, mainly because of OpenAI's ventures with Microsoft that started in 2019. Back in September 2023, Anthropic was generating revenue at a $100 million annual run rate and told investors it expected to top $500 million by the end of 2024. Annualized run rate is a metric that projects a company's future revenue over a year based on previously earned revenue. For example, if Anthropic generated $125 million in revenue for the first quarter, then by the end of the fourth quarter, its annualized revenue run rate would be $500 million. But Anthropic's $500 million revenue was projected back in September. Fast forward to today, it's now forecasting $850 million by the end of 2024. The AI hype is real, but how could this be? The founder siblings Daria and Danella took a chance and did the unthinkable. They left a big, well-funded tech startup to start their own venture to compete with that same startup, OpenAI. This is a story of how Anthropic got started, the company's mission and purpose, the crazy competition it faces, and what the future holds for the company. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dark Mode Digest, where we explore today's most important topics in tech. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future mini tech documentaries. Back in 2015 to 2016, a younger Dario was a senior research scientist at Google. He worked on Google's Brain Team, which was a deep learning AI research team under the umbrella of Google AI. It was later rebranded as Google DeepMind in April 2023. Dario was not only passionate about AI and its capabilities, but also its safety and reliability for humanity. While at Google, he worked on the safety and reliability of AI systems and published a paper where he and a few other researchers laid out key problems for preventing accidents in AI systems. Here were the five problems they documented. It needed to avoid negative side effects, avoid reward hacking, have scalable oversight, have safe exploration, and have robustness to distributional shift. But of course, like many big tech companies, Google was more interested in profits than safety. Dario soon left to join a young ethical startup at the time called OpenAI, where he initially led AI safety for the company. He was promised the company's mission to bring safe artificial general intelligence for the benefit of humanity. It was at OpenAI that he led the efforts to build GPT to what it is today. At OpenAI, Dario quickly became the VP of research and led the efforts to build GPT-2 and GPT-3. He was one of two people who set the overall research direction at OpenAI and crafted its annual research roadmap. His sister, Daniela, quickly joined from Stripe. She initially was an engineering manager and VP of people and quickly got promoted to the VP of safety and policy role. They both focused on long-term safety research, including how to make AI systems more interpretable and how to embed human preferences and values in future powerful AI systems. They were in very important roles that not only shaped the foundation of the company, but also the future of humanity. Henshins rose towards the end of the 2010s as OpenAI was seeing the struggles of being a non-profit organization in the corporate capitalist world of Silicon Valley. OpenAI was founded as a nonprofit in late 2015 to build safe and beneficial AGI for the benefit of humanity. It was committed to doing the public good versus making profits. Over the years, the nonprofit received $130 million in total donations to fund operations, research, and development. But it became increasingly clear that donations alone would not scale with the cost of computational power and the talent required to push research forward. So, in 2019, the organization organization established a for-profit subsidiary capable of issuing equity to raise money and hire world-class talent but still at the direction of the nonprofit. 
In comes Microsoft in the same year. The big tech conglomerate first invested $1 billion in 2019, then invested a total of $13 billion by the end of 2023, and is now OpenAI's largest shareholder with a 49% stake. OpenAI pivoted to commercialize its entire business and began focusing on corporate profits versus safety and reliability. Sam Altman, like a true entrepreneur, began to move at lightning speed to beat rising competition and launch its AI products. This went against everything Dario and Danella believed in. They were very concerned with OpenAI's push to move quickly to commercialize its technology. It was also a big concern for two other OpenAI employees, Jack Clark and Jared Kaplan. This was the same fear that echoed in the months leading up to Sam Altman's ousting back in November 2023. So, taking advantage of California's non-compete agreement among tech companies, the four left OpenAI by the end of 2020 and started their own AI research company, Anthropic, in February 2021. Dario, Daniela, Jack, and Jared believe AI will have a vast impact on the world. And so, their company is dedicated to building systems that people can rely on and generating research about the opportunities and risks of AI. Claude was Anthropic's answer to ChatGPT. Compared to ChatGPT, Claude was designed from the ground up to be more secure and respect privacy with far more governance and oversight into how data and systems actually function. Unlike ChatGPT, which has been trained on human preferences, Anthropic pioneered a purposeful approach for Claude called constitutional AI. This means Claude has been trained to align with a set of principles like freedom, opposition to inhumane treatment, and privacy. But something still seems odd. Anthropic was established as a public benefits corporation. This means it's a for-profit corporate entity whose main goal is to make a positive impact on society. The company has a board similar to OpenAI's, but there's another group of individuals that sit above the board known as the Long-Term Benefit Trust. It's five financially disinterested trustees with the authority to select and remove the majority of the members of the board. They essentially hold the majority of control over the company. They each serve one-year terms and future trustees are elected by a vote of the trustees. So Anthropic has a long-term benefit trust that cares more about safety than generating profits. However, it's gone off to raise significant capital from big tech conglomerates and Silicon Valley's top investors, all of which are for-profit businesses. Google has invested $2 billion into Anthropic. Amazon has invested $4 billion. Spark Capital invested $450 million. Menlo Ventures is investing $750 million and many more. The majority of all this funding happened in just one year. Anthropic's current valuation is topping $15 billion. How can an organization that wants profits invest in another organization that isn't necessarily optimizing for the same thing? Now, Anthropic is growing at rapid speed. Many AI startups are. Could it be going too fast? $850 million in annual revenue is a lot for just four years. Could the founders be going against the very reason they left their previous company to start Anthropic? Let's look at their business model. On the consumer side, similar to OpenAI, Anthropic operates on a freemium model that gives users a free rudimentary version of its chatbot, Claude, or a more powerful version for a $20 monthly fee. The company also sells to businesses as well, in which organizations pay per model family and per million tokens used. Companies like Notion, Quora, and DuckDuckGo use Claude to power their AI products and services. Now, Anthropic has a consumer freemium model as well as a commercial arm, and it's growing its business very quickly. This sounds pretty similar to OpenAI, which makes sense. But what we've seen from OpenAI and Sam Altman's ouster is the battle between effective accelerationism versus effective altruism. Effective accelerationism is a pro-technology stance that advocates for technology that advances beyond the point of human control. This is not only unavoidable, but desirable and a necessary part of human evolution. On the other hand, we have altruism, which is about slowing down and trying to control and align technology first to build safer AI systems. Anthropic seems to be focused on the latter, but the challenge with any organization slowing down is competition. We have Cohere, Inflection, Hugging Face, Stability, 
and more startups that have entered the space. We also have the big incumbents, which are investors in some of these startups. Google has DeepMind, which is the company's AI research lab that's building its AI model, Gemini, which powers Bard, its chat GPT competitor. Meta has its own AI team developing its large language model known as Llama 2. Amazon recently launched its own AI-powered chatbot for AWS customers called Q. Microsoft has been building out Copilot and just recently launched a mobile app for it. There's so much competition and there's so much demand. So why did companies like Google and Amazon invest in these smaller companies even though they were building out their own large language models? Well, they were facing immense pressure from OpenAI and Microsoft, so they needed their hands on some AI models. Why did startups like Anthropic and Inflection take capital from potential competitors? Because they need the cash. We all know AI is very expensive. So with immense competition and very expensive business, debates about morality and concerns about the effects of this new technology on humanity, what does the future hold for Anthropic and the entire industry? The industry continues to face one of the biggest challenges, which is aligning AI with human values and ethics. It's very subjective in nature. What is considered ethical or valuable can vary greatly across cultures and individuals. This is where Anthropic's work on interpretability and human feedback becomes increasingly important. It's still too early to tell who the winners will be in this AI race, but given Anthropic's explosive growth and focus on AI safety, it'll continue to be a key player in this industry, one that could go head to toe with open AI.